Hi and welcome to another work in progress video of adding ray tracing to Quake 3 using DXR. The main thing that I've added since last time is denoising to the lighting. You can see I've left the frame rate counter up but this is a debug build. I have a lot of debugging turned on in my sh shaders and I haven't done a performance pass. I've left this on just to show them getting real time results. I must point out that I still haven't got the diffuse textures available to my ray tracing shaders. That will probably be the next thing I work on, but for now I'm just using the same trick of using the diffuse that's stored in the G buffer. The G buffer still contains all the diffuse textures, the normals, but in the alpha channel of the normal I also now store the material ID, the depth, also the per object motion blur vectors, but they're a bit hard to visualize. Here you can see using the G buffer to cast rays out into the scene to compute the direct lighting. There's just one ray per pixel. That ray is slightly randomized in order to add a softness to the shadows. I should point out that any rays that have had any randomness added to them comes via a texture array full of blue noise. Here we have one bounce lighting. This comes from an extra two rays per pixel. As stated before, the color for this is coming from the diffuse that's stored in the G buffer. If that lookup fails, it falls back to black. But again, it really should be looking this up in the closest hit shader. And here a second bounce is added. This is another two rays per pixel, bringing the total to five rays per pixel. So this is the final result that comes out of the ray tracing. So here's the lighting results after they've been denoised. Here the lighting is combined with the diffuse textures from the G buffer to produce the final output. Here is another example. This is just the direct light. One bounce. Two bounces. And the final output. And here again the direct lighting. One bounce two bounces and final output. So how do we denoise this mess? Let's zoom in and take a look at this region. Using the velocity vectors in our G buffer, we can determine where a given pixel should have been in the last frame. So we keep the lighting output that was generated last frame. Combining the pixels from this frame from where they should have been in the last frame producing a smooth result. Applying the motion vectors will not line up with the center of the pixel from the last frame. So you need to bilinear interpolate the four pixels around the computed position. Of course, any or all of these pixels will need to be rejected if they are found to be invalid. Here is a visualization of how we determine which pixels are valid. Pixels may be invalid if they're off the screen or if they were occluded by something else. These are colored black. To determine if something was occluded, we use a composite of normals, depth, and material ID, represented here by different colored lines. Here is a visualization of how much history we have for each pixel. For pixels with little or no history, we fall back to this blur. This blur will not cross over material ID boundaries. Using the pixel history count, the two outputs are combined together to produce our denoised lighting output. And here you can see the light position animating. As usual, all the code will be up on GitHub. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or reach out to me on Twitter. A big shout out to the Microsoft denoising sample. It was very informative. And thank you for watching.